So um, I've created a team and a family within the company where where even guys are not lured by by money. They, mm. They'd rather stay in the environment where they're happy to turn up every day to work without any dramas, you know, or any of that culture that exists out there, you know, with the bullying, the um, the rubbish talk, yeah, just the alcohol and drugs, you know. I've seen it, and and even being in Sydney here, I, I still see it on site. People drinking on the job. Welcome to the Tradies Business Show with Warwick Bidwell. Talking business ownership, the nuts and bolts, and everything in between. And welcome to another episode of the Tradies Business Show. Great to have you with me. Really stoked with the messages I get from you, my listeners. After all, you're the reason I do this show. I started this show a few years ago now to help tradies like my dad and my mates who, you know, maybe a little bit late for the old man, but um, for you guys listening in, hoping that you take value from these episodes and that more than anything, you apply what you hear. If you if you listen to an episode and you get some good ideas, make sure you write it down and do something with it. So actually implement change in your business or in your life, whatever it is that you uh, you take away from these episodes. Hopefully it's something. But uh, make sure you do something with it. A little like today's guest. Uh, I was introduced to my guest today via a mutual friend. Um, my friend and I did some work or, or do some work with mates in construction. You would have heard me talk about them. And uh, and today's guest is another suicide survivor. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about culture and not the stuff you find in yogurt. Oh, boom, boom. Another one of my dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad my daughter's not old enough to listen to this show yet. Well, apart from the rude words that get used sometimes, but... Um, I think, actually, she thinks my dad joke's pretty funny. I wonder how long that'll last. She's about to turn six, and uh, although I don't talk to her very often, she still thinks her dad's pretty funny. <laughs> I hope that remains when she's 25. Anyway, today's guest, uh, he has built a pretty amazing team, a very large team, and um, and a very loyal team in an industry that you might think is a bit challenging. I hear a lot from tradies out there in business that, Oh, Warwick, you can't get good stuff and young people today. And I don't know why I'm doing sort of an old man voice. Uh, maybe it's the grumpy old man thing. But I do hear that a lot. Can't get good stuff. There's, you know, employees these days, all that sort of stuff. And yet uh, today's guest will hopefully change your mind a little bit about that. And maybe, just maybe, you will take a look in the mirror and have a look at yourself uh, when it comes to how your team's performing. So strap yourself in for another episode. Great chat with this guy. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. Been through some incredible challenges in his life. And uh, and by all means is um, putting himself out there and helping other people these days, uh, which is great to see. So um, stick around till the end. I'll, uh, I'll let you know how you can get in touch with our guest or find out more about him. And uh, apart from that, enjoy. Joining me today on the Tradies Business Show is a man by the name of Aleki Shomkul. I hope I've said that right, mate. Oh, that's correct. (laughs) Nice. That's correct. (laughs) So uh, listeners might pick up you've got a bit of a funny accent, mate. Uh, You haven't managed to get rid of it entirely. And if they could see a photo of you, they would see this beautiful man with a a very short haircut, (laughs) Uh, which is what I used to sport, mate. But uh, we were just joking uh, before I hit record about... I've I've decided to grow my hair back and try and recapture my youth, but the greys give me away. So, mate, enough about me. Can you uh, give my guests, my guests, give my listeners? You're the guest. Um, I obviously haven't haven't had enough coffee today. Uh, introduce yourself, Alecki. Who are you, mate? And uh, and what the bloody hell are you doing here? Yeah, my name's Alecki. Um, forty seven years old. Uh, next week, um, grew up, uh, born in Tonga. Uh, three years, um, 
living there and then migrated to New Zealand. So um, I think that's where the accent comes from. <laughs> Cross the ditch. <laughs> Cross the ditch, yeah, mate. That, that's it. Then um, lived in New Zealand for about 22 years before um, I decided to come to the real country of the milk and honey. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, mate. Nice plug for Australia. Good on you. Yeah, and um, yeah, majority of my life um, I've been in the construction industry from um, doing various jobs from uh, carpentry, concreting, machinery, um, managing, and um, yeah, the whole lot. So I've had um, 29 years experience in the industry. So yeah, and, and currently now a business owner for 10 years. Nice, mm. mate. And to put uh, everybody in the picture, what's your current business, Aleki? Give us a bit of a an overview of what you're up to at the moment. Yeah, my current business now is in the um, construction uh, formwork sector. Mm-hmm. Um, we um, yeah, just the um, uh, what's it? Uh, doing all the concrete works, the main structures. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything to do with concrete. Um, We're we're here to build that mould to um, build up all these big structures in all the cities here in Australia. So, yeah, we're we're moving about now. But um, just in the last three years when I um, returned back from overseas, I I found my purpose where – I could give back to the industry and um, uh, just seeing the culture of the uh, bullying, the alcohol, the drugs, um, the abuse, um, gambling. I've seen it all. uh, The suicides of close friends have died, um, killing themselves or drinking themselves to death Mm. Um, and also dying on site. Uh, I've seen it all. And, um, just being away overseas, I um, it really made me think that I could um, give back this time round to the um, industry. So, and um, Aleki, what were you doing overseas, mate? Um, I was working for my old boss um, in in Dubai uh, mm-hmm. in in the construction uh, industry. Um, he has uh, three thousand staff, which I was. Um, also um, blessed to train and, and teach and um, enhance their their um, skill level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how many workers have you got uh, on or, or working with your company at the moment? At the moment, I have about 70 plus um, and about 80% of them um, 17 to 25. Wow. That's... Yeah, the uh, ages, yeah. Do, do any of them refer to you as dad? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, both my sons work for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you yeah, go. And they're bo- Touché. Yeah, they're both. <laughs> they're both twenty, and um, yeah, we have a lot of their school mates that come in and work too. And um, yeah, uh, they're the age group that we target um, because um, they haven't been set in their ways. Mm. So. Um, so we're teaching them a lot of leadership. Um, it's not about the work. It, it, it's teaching them leadership to be leaders in their own lives. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know that's something you're very passionate about, Aleki, and we'll uh, definitely talk about that some more today. Well, what's Give us an idea of some of the projects that you've worked on. I mean, you, you talked about you know concrete formwork and everything to do with uh, concrete and keeping it where it's supposed to be. Uh, what's... Uh, you know, give us an idea. What, what's some of the projects that you've worked on, mate? Okay, the um, the biggest project I've worked on is was the um, Sydney Olympic Stadium. Oh wow! Yeah, um, massive job, massive job, and um, also um, it, it's a national um, landmark now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes for the right reasons, mate. Yep, that's it. Only when Queensland wins, though. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've adopted Queensland as your home state, have you, mate? Oh, definitely. Um, you've gone with the I winning first... side, at least. 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, when I first moved from um, New Zealand, I moved up to a little town called Tully up in North Queensland. Oh, yeah. The banana, banana town. Yep. Did you get a job <laughs> bending bananas up there, Eleki? Yeah, that's where my uncle put me. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, nice. Yeah. So six weeks after that, I just said, I'll oh, see you later. And I ended up um, starting um, construction here in um, in Australia, building the uh, Reef Casino up in Cairns. Yeah, right. So yeah. I'm curious, mate, how how does a uh, a southern brother from New Zealand uh, come to this country and land such big projects, uh, you know, form working and, and uh, you know, employing heaps of guys? Um, it took a while. Um, like I've only been in business um, for 10 years, but just – just staying in the industry and knowing how it works and um, and trying to implement things in, with the company. And if it doesn't work, you just end up opening up your own and um, putting in your own ideas and culture. So did you uh, – like, like how did you get work? Because presumably you, you started up your company, you didn't have any customers – what was uh, what were some of the things you did to actually get it going and get to the stage where now you've got you know seventy plus workers and obviously a, a large uh, company that you've built? Yeah, don't get me wrong, it, it was bloody hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, I started off um, just with uh, a small team of about four guys, and um, we were building a school. Mm-hmm. We're building a school, and um, we were there for few months and um yeah you know um like any business it's still teething and um yeah we had our ups and downs just in the first few months <laughs> yep. so that was so that was a big challenge in itself and um yeah just over time you just start picking up um um ideas and and also getting um feedback from contractors and, and other people in the trade and um, yeah, just willing to to implement um, what they've passed on to me. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned yeah. uh, that it was hard uh, at the start, and I'm sure you've had some challenges along the way. What's what's been some of your? Uh, I'll refer to them as learnings. What what's been some of your big learnings in in business, and I guess in life as well, Lucky? Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, my big lesson was to get a contract. You know, a, a, a gentleman's agreement, a shake hand, doesn't always um, <laughs> it doesn't always end up in a nice place. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did Did you have uh, some bad experiences with that, mate? Oh, definitely. Yeah, a few times. Um, yeah, even with contracts, um, the industries are riddled with um, corruption and snakes. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. It's um, it, it's not a good industry to be in if you're tied in with the wrong people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I guess, you know, that holds true for, for anything in life if you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Uh, what's, what's the saying? If you, if you lay with dog, you wake up with, with dogs, you wake up with fleas or something. So Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you know, making sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's. Uh, what was what, yeah. what some of the... Um, you know, maybe hiccups along the way, growing the business and uh, and getting to where you were now. Yeah, um, just getting. Um, yeah, I think you get burnt a few times along the way, and uh, they really make you learn. Um, yeah, just financially, or even from your own workers. Um, yeah, staff. So um, yeah, you learn as time goes to. Um, the do's and don'ts um, in um, growing your business or, or, or keeping your business small and simple. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but just getting the right guys. And um, I think that's what I've got now um, um, down pat is just teaching the men. It's the mindset, not the skill. Yeah, okay. Can that, you t- that, that I need to teach the men, yeah. Can you tell us more about that? You, you've obviously had a lot of workers through your business in the last ten years. 
what's what's uh, your secret to success, perhaps? Or um, you know, you talk about that mindset stuff. Can you expand on that for us a bit? Because I know a lot of uh, my listeners, um, I guess, and a lot of tradies just in general struggle to get good staff, and and then when they do get good ones, trying to keep them and develop their team. So what's worked for you, mate? Obviously, with so many people on board, you've got something going on for you. Yeah, um, yeah. What I've been, um, yeah, what I've seen over the years um, is that um, the workers want to belong to something. So um, I've created a team and a family within the company where where even guys are not lured by by money. They, mm. They'd rather stay in the environment where. They're happy to turn up every day to work without any dramas, you know, or any of that culture that exists out there, you know, with the bullying, the um, the rubbish talk, mm. the um, yeah, just the alcohol and drugs, you know. I've seen it, and and even being in Sydney here, I, I still see it on site. People drinking on the job. It's um, seriously just taking that away, you know. Yeah, yeah right. it's it, and I don't want my workers um, to be around that environment where where their well being's been um, compromised by people's um, you know stupid choices. So how do you deal with that, Alecky? When you've got you know these massive construction sites with hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands of workers on site, not everybody is going to be uh, following your culture and and playing by your rules of the game. How do you, um, as you say, you know, protect your guys from that? Yeah, our team, um, yeah, our team, they pretty much um, stick together. Um, yeah, they just um, pull each other up. Um, that's part of um, what I teach them too is how to communicate. Mm. If you see something wrong, communicate it because it's good practice, you know. It's part of um, the leadership and the main um, the main tool in the leadership is is speaking. Okay, what do you mean by that? Oh, um, not just seeing seeing um, stuff go past, but verbalise it. Because I know there's a lot of young men, and also in the industry, they don't have a voice. Mm. And um, yeah. And just not having that voice, they they're not fully expressing, you know, what what's right, what's wrong. So they so they're pretty much a partake of whatever that other guy's doing. That's not right. Yeah, they're just falling but, into into line with whoever they're with. Yeah. So we um, uh, teach them to speak their mind, um, and also um, teaching a lot of respect. You know, respecting. Um, Everyone, not just our workers, yep. but everyone who's out there and also property. Yeah, yeah. And so presumably this doesn't just happen, uh, you know, organically or uh, or randomly. Do you, do you have some uh, systems in place or do you have a formula that you follow? Like, you know, let's, let's say I join your crew and come and start working for you. What does my progression look like as a member of your team? Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, just after two years of um, uh, spending a lot of time um, uh, moulding this culture, um, we have that many men now. So if two or three gets thrown into the team, they'll end up just seeing uh, the culture in um, in all the different workers. Mm. But, uh, but all in one, you know. Um, yep. Yeah, we've had yeah we've had a lot of men come through and, and they get, yeah, they just um, blend in with everyone else and um, end up um, um, taking on that um, the culture and the good vibes. Um, so really you've, yeah. you've created an environment where it's, it's, well, not impossible, but it's hard for somebody to come in and not conform to your way of, of doing things. Yeah, we've had a few guys come in with egos and, that, and the boys – they just shut them down quickly. Yep. And they they just go, "Hey, we don't we don't talk like that around here." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, or they'll pull them up and and um, ask them what their problem is. You know, is there any way they can help? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know, it's it's something that I think a lot of employers struggle with is how to create a culture like that that is essentially self sustaining, where as the employer you don't need to be, you know, individually working with each of your staff. It almost happens automatically as people join that team. Yeah, yes, that's it. Um, and it all starts with um, being leaders. And um, we've trained a lot of leaders. And, um, yeah, I'm proud to say that um, our youngest leader, who was 17 years old, um, he was younger than my son. Wow. But they went to the same school. And he was um, in charge of older men with a team of like 15 workers. Jeez, mate. So what, yeah. what are you doing to to create those leaders, Alecki? It's just sharing every, it's sharing my whole path, my life, and everything that I've um, um, done in my life and experienced. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just helping these young fellas um, fast track, really, yep. so they can um, – do something better with their life than what I was at that age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you talk about uh, your youth, Alecky, and we haven't really uh, uncovered anything about that. Can can you give us some insights into, I suppose, some of the experiences throughout your formative years that really shaped who you are and your decision to do what you're doing? Yes. Um, yeah, growing up in um, in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, yeah, I was. Yeah, you won't believe that I was always the smallest kid in class. <laughs> no, and and for the benefit of of our listeners, given that this is uh, an audio medium, mate, how how tall are you, Lucky? Uh, about six one, yep. six one, six two. And are you willing to disclose your current body weight, mate, or is that is that a secret? Uh, a hundred ten. Yes, yeah. hundred ten. And so, yeah. so you were always the smallest in class. What, what happened, mate? You stand in a bucket of manure or something? What, what was going on there? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I think just in my late teens, I just had a, a, a massive growth. <laughs> I, I missed out, out on yeah. that. Uh, I missed out on that lunch pack, mate. No, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but I had to go shopping and buy new clothes. Nice work. <laughs> So you're the smallest yeah. in class uh, growing up, mate. How did how did that impact you? Yeah, and, and being the smallest um, smallest kid, you, you you're always um, uh, a, a victim of uh, being bullied and and, and abuse. Um, yeah, not just at school, but also with family and and, and friends too, um, even strangers. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and um, yeah, just growing up. Um, as a kid with no confidence, yep, no confidence, and um, yeah, mainly um, scared and and not wanting to speak out or or really um, say what I really wanted to. Mm. Yeah. So when did that change for you, mate? What happened? Apart from getting to six foot one and one hundred and ten kilos, <laughs> I suspect that changed things. Yeah, I um. Yeah, I um, I think when I left school, uh, when I left school and got my size, and um, I um, yeah had a bit of confidence, you know, it was I was bigger than the other kids who were bigger than me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, dur- uh, during school, I kind of overtook them, mm-hmm. but um, but also um, being bullied as a kid, I um, yeah I, I was brought up with a lot of uh, violence. And, um, yeah, I ended up um, uh, being violent myself, protecting myself from the bullies, mm. you know, and, and and they were like the same bullies who were bullying me like a decade later. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. So um, bullying just doesn't stop. You know, people still think that you're still this young kid from back in school days and, yep. yeah. Yeah, but vice versa, it all changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Different mm-hmm. size. <laughs> yeah. Different size and, yeah. Um, 
yeah, not proud of it, but um, I just have to take it all as a learning. Mm. Mm. And so from there, presumably you entered the, the workforce, mate. What were some of your early experiences that – that uh, again, you know, I, I guess what I'm what I'm wanting to uncover here, Alecky, is you have a, a fairly unique uh, way of thinking about your team, and you're working in a pretty a pretty rough sort of uh, industry where, as you say, there's a lot of um, drugs and alcohol and uh, bullying on site and and some questionable practices, um, and yet you seem to have this. This company and this team that is really uh, well, not spotless, but you, know, you kind of got that Teflon exterior where that stuff doesn't seem to stick. So I just wonder where that came from for you. Was there a time in your life that you look back on and see that as quite um, pivotal in you uh, having this attitude? Oh yes, definitely. Um, I've seen, um, yeah, like I said earlier, I've seen everything, and. Um, and and losing friends um kinds of really make you think you know um yeah and yeah really makes yeah yeah like one of um a good friend of ours that was working on our job he was getting ready for his 21st birthday and um had his girlfriend fly down from uh, north queensland and yeah, he hung himself before his birthday, and and his um, girlfriend was still flying down. Dear, dear. And um, yeah, and um, and that's just common in the industry. Every second day, someone commits suicide in yeah. the industry. Yeah, yeah. and I know uh, I've I've had a number of guests uh, on the show that have had experience with suicide, and. Uh, it's it's certainly not a podcast specifically about that, but it is such a big issue, and it and it is such a part of what we do. I guess you know no different to the fact that uh, you know people get heart disease or cancer or anything else. I think the more we can just uh, normalise talking about these issues, the more we can actually start to to perhaps change that, change the conversation. So um, you know it's it's uh, certainly something that we need to be okay to discuss openly and i'm hoping uh, we can do that here on the tradies business show but that that sort of yeah. thing obviously has a profound effect on you alecky i mean how do you deal with that personally mate and not just losing uh, people close to you to suicide but how do you deal with the cut and thrust of the industry and and seem to stay so so calm and chilled out mate i've 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 only known you for a <laughs> short time but i know you to be a very uh well you seem very peaceful mate i mean you're a pretty big bloke so i wouldn't want to upset you <laughs> <laughs> well i uh... Well, I wasn't always like that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's easy to be chilled out when no one's willing to uh, to take you on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um, uh, where it all changed was um, when I lost everything before I went to Dubai, and um, even though I had uh, I was in my business, um, but back then I didn't have have the culture, mm. and. Um, yeah, I lost everything, and, and and I understand the um, people going through suicide and depression because when I lost everything, I was living in my car and depressed and um, getting ready to jump off the cliffs. Mm, mm. So yeah, you've been there yourself, mate. Obviously, yeah. So I've been there myself, so I understand. And yeah, and I think when you really hit rock bottom, you either have a choice, you either give up and, you know, um, give up on life or you either bounce back. Mm. And I've chosen to bounce back and um, give back. So I want to talk about the giving back in a moment, but how how did you make that choice? Because so many people are faced with so many choices every day and, and find it difficult to make the best choice or the right choice. And you know it doesn't have to be quite as uh, as you know dramatic as uh, you know considering taking your own life, but it could be a choice to sack somebody or not, or uh, you know get angry and stand up for yourself in a contract situation or not. I mean, how are you guided through those things, Alecky? Um, I do know now after a lot of. Um, um, uh, coaching myself and um, 
seminars and, and just working on developing myself and getting tools and um yeah just in the last decade and um it's just taking myself out of the picture mm-hmm. i think when i was um depressed and um going through the suicide i was just focusing on myself yep I know now because I've been a few times after I, I did attempt and, and when I changed my focus into um, like my children or mm. or who I can help, I don't even have have the um, yeah that idea of of um, jumping off the cliffs doesn't even come near me now because I know that. I have a purpose in life to um, contribute my energy and uh, time to other people. Mm. It's mm. it's an interesting point you make, and uh, I've done the uh, it's called assist training, so suicide intervention training. Um, but one of the things that uh, that those of us working in this area, supporting others, talk about is protective factors and. Um, mm. you know, they don't always work, but I, th- I think, uh, you know, if we take some of those lessons from, uh, I guess, you know, what are, what are essentially mental health issues with depression, anxiety, uh, suicide sometimes, but we can take some of those tools and those learnings and apply them just in our day to day life as business owners when we're making these yes. choices. Um, yes. and it's very powerful to have that purpose that's, that's outside of ourselves. You know, I could do something mm. for me. I could, I could enter into a, a contract for me, or I could consider my team and my family and my community and start being motivated by that, that sort of uh, external factor. And it's very, very powerful. Yes. Yes. And, um, yeah, I used to stress a lot and, um, Go bananas, you know. <laughs> you know uh, when financial um, um, problems come up for the industry. I, I, I think everyone knows that. Um, mm. That's the big. That's the biggest uh, uh, killer, really. The yeah. um, financial stress. You know, you fight with your missus. You go and do stupid things, and um, mm. yeah. Ha- um, but how I deal with it now, and and that's how you see me. Um, the last time you see me, and I. I'm calm all the time. <laughs> <laughs> drink, drink a lot of herbal tea, do you? <laughs> <laughs> when a problem comes, I go, "Oh shit, fuck, <laughs> shit," and then and then I just have to sit back and go, "Okay, yep." What's yep. why am I really stressed here? Yeah, I ask myself that question, and um, and what I do now is. I move myself two weeks or three weeks ahead and look back at me today and go, what the fuck am I stressing about? I've already solved the problem. <laughs> <laughs> we stress because we haven't found the solution for it. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. yes. so, I put, so I put myself weeks ahead and go, okay, but you can't just sit and do nothing. You have to start actioning stuff to get there. So you don't stress because it's just a lack of action and um, not having the 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 right solutions. Mm. And mm. and uh, as uh, particularly for the men listening, um, we tend to be very much problem solvers and we want to have those solutions. And if we can't solve the problem, then you know, in a lot of cases, I see guys who feel like they failed or that they're they're you know not capable because they can't solve these problems before them but uh you know that you contrast that with the way uh women approach things and they tend to i guess feel things more they're not so attached to um fixing everything right now and i think oftentimes uh, our lady listeners are, are better at solving problems sometimes because you know they're although you know there's more emotion involved uh often they're also not as attached to that instant solution and i have to fix it now and if i don't then i'm useless <laughs> yeah, I know that's yeah, that's the male uh, mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas <laughs> if we just let things be for a bit and and do like you say, you know, step out of of that uh, situation you're in and and look at it from a different perspective, which can be hard sometimes. Uh, hmm. But it's definitely uh, a, a critical part of of dealing with those challenges as they come up. Yeah, yeah. It's the um, 
it's like anything. The more you keep practicing it, it just becomes a habit. Yep. It's uh, yeah. building it like building a muscle, mate. Not that you probably need to do much more of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. Aleki, you talked about giving back. Uh, what does that look like for you these days? Um, well, it's um, it, it's still going on. Um, still sharing, um, yeah, sharing and inspiring people um, that I cross paths with. Um, also, in um, um, the different industries, and also some of my contractors when I've shared my. It's just that power of sharing it that um, when you just share with people you know but you don't really know them, mm. they kind of they kind of open up when you're um, raw and honest with them. Yep. And then they'll come up with, "Oh shit, I was there too," you yeah. know. I've yep. been. I was just about to do that, you know, a couple of years ago, and so it's kind of opened up a, a, a relationship uh, because just sharing um, a story and then they open up with their story and they go, oh, wow, I'm getting stuff from his story too as he's getting stuff from mine. So, Mm. um, you know, we both benefit and um, that's the power of sharing, um, just inspiring people and also um, letting them open up as well because just sharing and opening up has been – uh, a healing process for me so the more i keep sharing i don't dwell in my past but i dwell in in in, in um the outcome that i'm living today mm. yeah it is so mm. very powerful and uh, not that we yeah. we uh want to be just uh you know going around talking about ourselves but i think creating that space where we can find that common experience amongst um people around us uh, I, yeah. I had a conversation just yesterday with a mate of mine who's going through a divorce and, you know, I, I'm still sort of transitioning through mine uh, a couple of years later. Uh, and it was exactly that. You know, we had a cup of coffee. We sat down. It wasn't a counseling session or a bitch session. It was literally just talking about our experiences. And, you know, he he heard that I'd been through some similar stuff and, you know, we swapped notes and feelings and uh, experiences and and just the whole mood, uh, particularly for him, lifted by the end of that because he's sort of in the thick of it at the moment. Uh, and awesome. I think, yeah, it's it's just identifying or, or realizing that others are going through this too. And as much as we yes. know that, until we're actually sitting with perhaps someone like you, Aleki, or, or you know, a friend or whatever it might be, even a, even a professional counselor or psychologist, it's like, all oh, right, other people have been through this too. Yeah. And are going through it and have gotten through it and, and, you know, come through it okay. Yeah. So are you uh, are you doing anything more formal other than just being a, a great bloke and, and uh, sharing with people around you, mate? <laughs> I'm doing a, a few workshops, uh, one later this month and uh, one in November so I can um, speak on stage, so I can um, share more of my story and... Um, the leadership that I have with my workers to, to um, yeah, to touch more people. Mm, um, yeah, I've just um, uh, done my blue card too, so I can uh, hit the schools too. You know, the the teenagers that you know from the schools. Yep. Um, just before they leave, you know, leave school. You know, I could um, share my story. You know, of the bullying and the path and, you know, um, just having leadership in their own lives. Yeah, yeah, yep. Now, yeah, I, so, yeah. Sorry, mate. I know uh, there are quite a number of, uh, of younger tradies that listen to the show, um, and I know it's an area that you're passionate about. Aleki is, is I guess, supporting and, and developing the young guys that are coming through and girls. Uh, what... I guess what would be your tips or advice or um, you know mentorship to to that younger generation of tradespeople coming through? Yeah, always be willing, always be willing to learn. Uh, respect everyone because it'll come back. You know, when you um, uh, respect everyone and give everything a go, um, opportunities will open up. Mm. Um, 
you know, when you're being a dick or 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 not giving anything a go, um, you might as well just pack up and and leave. Mm. Yeah, and um, yeah, mainly just asking because I know there's a lot of young men. Um, I was there myself, uh, or young women. Um, if you don't know anything, ask. Don't be afraid because um, that's where your knowledge will come from. Mm. Or even ask ask them to show you um, if you don't know because you look like a bigger dick if you don't know and you're trying to do something that, um, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so true, mate. I've learned that the hard way over the years too. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so that's what I'm sharing with everyone, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my whole life, you know, everything I've done and uh, gone through, and yep. Um, yep. yeah. And what about what about for us older blokes, mate, that are probably employing younger people and maybe sometimes finding it a bit frustrating to uh, to work with that younger generation without generalising too much? I mean, what can us old people, uh, older people, I shouldn't say old, uh, what can us more mature people uh, learn or change to um, to have a positive impact on this whole scenario? Oh, I think um, we've got to um, have a lot of patience. <laughs> 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 yeah, a lot of patience and... Um, yeah, just be willing to um, um, uh, train the guys, you know, or, or interview and have a talk. It's not just about the work, but also getting to know them um, personally and what they do and, you know, stuff that's going on in the background, you know. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, because the last thing you want is a scared worker then you're never going to know anything about him. He's not going to perform as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and there could be shit that's going on in the background that you should know, um, and you don't. So, mm. um, yeah, it's just being um, just, yeah, like I said, with my work is welcoming, having that welcoming uh, feel um, for them starting, um, and, and that will build their confidence to be more open. Mm. open back to you because you you'd want a worker that communicates with you then rather than one that just keeps quiet and just told what to do yeah and yeah. and that goes back to what you're saying about building a team that has a culture that is uh almost has a life of its own mate oh definitely and um yeah and i think um just with this business the last three years um after dubai um um, that's the most fulfilling part about my business now. It's not the money, even though I've um, upped my rates and, um, um, you know, got more workers expanded. Um, the most fulfilling part is um, giving back and, and seeing their growth um, in, in their leadership in their own lives. Mm, that's awesome, mate. So, what's next for you, Alecky? You've, uh, you know, you've got the uh, the big form working company, heaps of guys, good culture. You're a chilled out dude. Um, you're not the smallest in class anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's next for you, mate? Oh, what's next? Oh, well, um, yeah, just a speaking on stage to touch more people, schools, um, you know, building sites anywhere. Yep. Um, yeah, just making a difference, eh? Making a difference. Um, and also um, growing my workers. Like I have, my head's going round and round because um, most of the kids that I've employed, they've, they've come from broken families. Um, some mm. have just come out of jail and they're still young. Yep. Um, you know, from the adult jail. Mm. And, um, you know, and, and, in the lockup every week, you know, so just seeing the change in their life, you know, is, um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it just makes me um, fulfilled and want to keep um, going, eh? Yeah. And, um, and finding a way to do it on a bigger scale. 
Nice, mate. Nice. Well, yeah. well the world certainly needs more uh, employers and, and more blokes like you, Alecky. So, uh, mate, thank you for all the work that you do. If uh, if listeners would like to stalk you or find out more about you or your company or perhaps even your speaking gigs, is there a is there a good way for people to go and check you out or get in touch with you, mate? Oh, just email or call me. Yeah, um, um, always open to to share whatever knowledge or advice that I have um, with everyone. Cool, mate. So That's open okay. book. So your uh, your company name is Alpha Stream, is that that's correct? Yes, Alpha Stream. A A L F A. So um, yeah, Alpha. Seattle Alpha was already taken. <laughs> ah, nice, mate. And I'll I'll put a link. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes uh, with your contact details. But uh, mate, thank you again for coming on the Tradies Business Show. It's been awesome to have a chat and learn a bit more about you. We don't we don't know each other. Um, extremely well, but I know a fair bit about you and uh, the mutual fen- friend that connected us uh, speaks very highly of you, mate, and certainly sounds like you're doing some awesome stuff out there in an industry that certainly is facing some challenges and uh, could do with a bit of positive change from people like yourself, mate. So thank you again. Yeah, and thank you for the uh, opportunity, Was um, Yeah, it was great. Um, also to meet you in person um, uh, early on this year, so very blessed, very blessed. Awesome, mate. Well, look, uh, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon, buddy. Yes, there you have it. Alecky Shomkel from Alpha Stream. Now, uh, as Alecky said, he's also working with people uh, in the industry, um, doing a bit of basically mentoring, I guess. Uh, we can't have too many mentors around the place. It's... Uh, you know, if you had six good mentors, it'd be better than having one, which is certainly better than having none. So anyway, uh, go to tradiesbusinessshow.com, find this episode, and uh, check out the show notes. You'll see a link in there um, with Alecky's contact details. As always, thanks for listening. I've enjoyed today's episode. I hope you did too. Hooroo. You've been listening to The Tradies Business Show with Warwick Bidwell. Want to get off the tools and into true business ownership? Find out how at tradiesbusinessshow.com.